you know, the race drivers with, with other pits as well. Um, and yeah, I've, I've learned so much this year. I mean, this time last year, I've just become GP2 champion. Uh, and, and I thought I'd prove myself to the Formula One world. Um, but now it's different when you're in Formula One. The, uh, the cars are so much more complex. You're working with so many more people in the team. And uh, it's, it's been such a big learning year. And I've le learned all the tracks, or a lot of the tracks as well I've been driving on, and, uh, and how Formula One really works. So now it's, it's fantastic that I've been able to use that and get into a race seat for next year. And you feel ready? Oh, yeah, I, I definitely feel, I've, yeah. I feel ready for a long time. But now I feel super ready and uh, ready to ready. go. Born ready. Exactly. Now, look, you told me um, earlier today that you, you've done a track walk here. I assume you've been on the simulator back at Enstone. What can you tell us about this racetrack? I think it looks awesome. That's the, the first thing, really. I, I've not, obviously, not driven it. It's, uh, it's great that it's back on the. Um... We've actually got the safety car going round at the moment. Yeah, yeah. So, this, this straight that they're going round there is, is so long. It's going to be vying for, for uh, top speed of the year with Monza. Um, and Put it's, a number it's, on that. Uh, what will that be? about over 350 kilometers an hour. So it's going to be, I think we'll see, that's, just, that's the early simulations anyway. But it looks really, it's an old school track. I mean, it's been used in the 80s, I think even the early 90s. So it's not a new, a new build. There's been some changes to it, but it looks a really good challenge. Some good overtaking spots, easy to hit a wall as well, which is nice from a driver's point of view, strangely, because it just adds an extra element of um, Did I, did of I hear adrenaline. you right there? It's nice to be able to hit a wall? Yeah, because if you don't hit a wall, then it's even better. Other people, <laughs> other people kind of take themselves out. So Not old uh, school. Yeah. I, I love it. Yeah, that's where the real thrill comes from as well, to be um, pushing flat out. And you see there, the wall's really close on the, on the safety cars right there. So um, I think it's cool. I think there's going to be really low grip as well, uh, especially as, as it's all been relayed to tarmac. The air's thin, so the downforce is going to be low. I think there's going to be a lot of challenges. So um, yeah, I mean, there should be plenty, plenty to talk about. Can you see anyone beating Mercedes this weekend? Not really, no, sadly. Um, they, they've done such a good job. I mean, it, it's going to be the usual suspects, really. Uh, Ferrari, I guess, and Vettel particularly, that can take the fight, maybe. And you never know. I think there's, as races go, there's a lot more unknowns about this one than the rest of them this year. So, um, I mean, I hope we'll, we'll see a great race at the front and someone can challenge Mercedes, but obviously they are still the team to beat. And we're going to have more than 100,000 people here on Sunday. It's been a sellout for months. How much difference does it make in the cockpit? when you've got a big crowd versus a small crowd? It's, it's fantastic to have a big crowd. It's, uh, I mean, in the cockpit when you're racing, you're focused on the driving, obviously, and you don't have a lot of time to think about it. And you've got 27,000 people staring at you through here. I think this bit's incredible. I think on any race calendar, that stadium section is like a real bowl. And uh, yeah, what, 27,000 people in there, it's gonna be incredible atmosphere. I, I think it will make a difference just to the whole feel of the place for the weekend and, and everyone's moods and, and thoughts. So I think it would be nice to have a huge crowd. I hope it's going to be big and um, I hope it can stay on the calendar. Well, look, just final thoughts from you now. Is, uh, what's the programme between now and Melbourne for you? Uh, getting as prepared as I possibly can be in every way. So I'll be driving the last three, three uh, Grand Prix FP, FP1s only. So um, here, Brazil and Abu Dhabi. And then carrying on working with the team, do a lot of simulator running over the winter, uh, train my hardest to make sure I'm the fittest I've ever, ever been when I turn up to Melbourne. And um, yeah, anything else. OK, well, look, we wish you the best of luck with everything. It's great news that you're, you're keeping the family business going. Exactly. Cheers. All right. Thanks for your time. Great stuff. Well, let's now look at the standings ahead of this Grand Prix weekend. We've got, uh, let's start with the drivers. We've got, um, Lewis, of course, who has put the title beyond doubt last Sunday, but the battle for second is absolutely on. Vettel there leads Rosberg by just four points. Behind them, the battle of the Finns is hotting up. Raikkonen only 12 points ahead of Bottas, and there's very little to spit the Red Bull drivers, Danny Kafir and Daniel Ricciardo. As for the constructors, Mercedes have long since tied that one up, and Vettel's third place in Austin was enough for Ferrari to seal second place. Williams looks set fair in third, while the big mover after Austin is Toro Rosso, who are now only seven points behind Lotus. Now, earlier on, I, talk, I caught up with that local hero, Sergio Perez. Uh, as you can imagine, he's looking forward to his home Grand Prix. Well, check out the big days finally here. How are your emotions? Yeah, they're very high and so much looking forward to, to be out there racing with these people. Uh, something that I... It's, it's a dream come true to race in my country and yeah, I just cannot wait uh, too long 
to to be there uh, driving, you know, in front of all, all these crowds. How busy has the build-up to this race been for you? Just describe what you've done since Austin. Yeah, it's been quite a busy one. Obviously, a lot of uh, attention, a lot of expectation from the people. But it, it has been very enjoyable. But now the, the real thing starts, so definitely looking so much forward to this one. Is it going to be hard to focus on the on-track stuff when you've got so much going on outside? It, it's obviously not, not the easiest thing to do, but... Um, I'm at the top of my game and I see no issues with that. It will be a lot of motivation, but at the end of the day, I have to do my own thing. How many people are going to be here on Sunday? 110,000 people. And do you know that 110,000 people are going to be cheering for one man? <laughs> yeah, that's, that feels <laughs> very, very special to me, you know, because uh, it's been so many years that I don't race at, uh, at my country that finally to get this opportunity, it will be something amazing. You're about to head out on your track walk. Just describe mm -hmm. what do you think you're going to need from your car to be quick around this racetrack this weekend? I think you need a good straight line speed. As you can see, it's uh, one of the longest uh, straight line that we have. Obviously, because of the altitude, we have very low um, drag, you know, very, very low air into the car. So, which means we're going to be doing a very high speed. So, so I think you also need very good en entry stability, very good braking. Because by having that, then everything comes automatically. You have a very long sec sections of braking, so it's important to have that one. And uh, from a physical point of view, we're at 2,200 meters here. I'm pretty out of breath just walking down the pit lane. How's it going <laughs> to be feels, for you uh, in the car? Feels, yeah, it feels a bit, uh, a bit more difficult to, to keep the breath, but uh, we, we're used to, to this, and uh, I see no issues with that. Well, uh, have a great race this weekend. Thanks Thank you. for your time. I better let you go. Your engine is quite you. far ahead. Thank Thanks. you very much. Cheers. Cheers, guys. Thanks. Thank you, man. Well, Checo Perez, he's clearly loving it, isn't he? And he's, he was even with the president of Mexico this morning. That is how much this race means to this country. And there's another Mexican who is very proud of the Mexican Grand Prix. He's a local boy and he's long history in Formula One, Joe Ramirez. Joe, it's quite phenomenal what they've created here. It's changed a lot since Formula One last raced here in 92, hasn't it? A hell of a lot, a hell of a lot. And when you consider it that in June or July, it was nothing here, because all the old pits, everything down, oh, but they don't, I'm, I'm really proud that I, I had a little, you know, you always had a little bit of doubt, you know, being in Mexico, you know, if we don't do it right, the FIA the FIA and, the, and the media would crucify, you know, Mexico, third world country, and and uh, maybe they take the next Grand Prix. So I'm really very, very proud that, to, to see what they've done. Incredible. You're a local boy. You, you were born in Mexico City. How much passion is there for Formula One in Mexico at the minute? Oh, a hell of a lot. You could see how they drive on the, on the streets. Uh, and we waited first 30 years to have a, a Formula One driver and 23 years to have a Grand Prix here. It's just too much for a country that has a passion for the automobile. They love racing, they drive like crazy. And, you know, this is the whole of Mexico is waiting for it so much. You won't see it Sunday. It's going to be fantastic. It's an interesting point you make. So you say Mexico has a passion for the automobile. The passion for Formula One isn't based on Checo Perez. It's based on a passion for cars. It's a passion, yes, for car and racing. I mean, Ander Rodriguez kind of started that it took so long to get another Mexican driver is not very, very sad. Uh, and actually, it's thanks to Scuderia Telmes and Carlos Lim that they have launched two drivers uh, for the Grand Prix and that they would the start the furore to make in a Grand Prix. Um, yes, we, we have a lot to thank to, to them and they see it that uh, make it possible. The government obviously is helping. So it's something like the Rodriguez brothers, they will be very proud that uh, Mexico have continued what they started. OK, there's lots of very proud Mexicans this weekend, aren't there? And Rob Smedley from Williams joins me now. Rob, are you pleased to be here? Excited? Uh, yeah, absolutely. You know, the, the, the facilities um, are really great, you know, much better than, than, than we actually expected. You know, really, really um, great show that we're, we're going to put on here, hopefully. You know, it's going to bring us a, a, a lot of, of unknowns racing at these ambience, um, brand new track. But that, that final sector through the, through the old baseball ground is absolutely stunning. 
Well, Rob, let's talk about how a team prepares for a new racetrack. This all came together very, very late, so I'm assuming there's not that much data available. So what do you do? How do you prepare back at base for this race? I mean, most of the teams now, they, they have driver simulators and, you know, we have quite advanced lap simulation as well, steady state lap simulation, uh, dynamic lap simulation. And, and so the, the first thing that you need to do is you need, to, you need to get what's called a track scan, a LiDAR track scan. So that's effectively a laser scan of all the track and, and what, the, what the layout is, is like, the trajectory, um, the, you know, how up and down it is, if, if you like. And, and once once we've done that, then then we run our a computer simulation around it, and we we get the first round of of, of data, and then we run the the um, the driver simulator around it. So usually we've been running quite extensively with Alex Lynn. Um, we've had Valtteri um, running around here as well, Felipe, and we're just trying to collect as much data as possible. So do you feel more underprepared for this race than a track that you've been to hundreds of times? 100 percent, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. There's so many unknowns. I mean, the 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 team that comes out of this weekend best is going to be the team that makes the the, the least mistakes. You know, there's you 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 can't go into it knowing absolutely everything. It's it's almost impossible, um, especially racing at these ambience. Um, but the team that's done their homework again and again and again and been round it, you know, 15 times round that round that homework loop, and will probably be the team that makes the the, the fewest mistakes. The team that expects, um, you know, as the as the most simulated data under its belt um, and they'll be the ones who come out on top but but we're, we're not as prepared as, as we like to be well i'm sure you are look good luck this weekend we wish you the best of luck i hope it goes better than in austin rob thank you very much Thanks for so your much. time so we're now going to head down the paddock here the last time uh, i was here was in january there was nothing here and it's just uh, it's been a phenomenal uh, amount of work that's gone in here and as you can see we've got sebastian vettel on my right there uh, talking to the german media He's trying to secure that second place after that phenomenal performance uh, he put in in Austin last weekend. But uh, these buildings are very like Austin last weekend. They're all temporary structures, not permanent. It's only the pit buildings themselves uh, that, are, that are permanent. These will get taken, these will get taken down after uh, the race on Sunday so that it allows all the NASCAR trucks and uh, Nigel I've just walked straight past you I am so sorry <laughs> how are you so I was, bu <laughs> I was busy talking about the buildings how boring am I Nigel it's wonderful to see you so you won the last Grand Prix here in 92 oh, no. it's so motivating I mean my goodness me 1992 winning the race I mean uh, some of the moves we did here in years before and then obviously the world championship and did a great interview with Lewis and I said, uh, I'm going to slim down a bit more and be his teammate next year. And I bet you could, <laughs> damn it. Now, Nigel, what's your capacity here this weekend? Why are you here? Uh, I'm ambassador for all the promoters and uh, basically uh, doing a lot of uh, goodwill and uh, obviously being honoured with obviously the naming of the last corner, the Peralta it used to be, and now is the last third of it, the Nigel Mansell corner, which is... Uh, I think uh, very historic for me. Well, it's a very proud moment to have a corner very named proud after moment, you. Very proud moment. Yeah. And I mean, I mean, going around the circuit, we walk around the circuit and uh, seeing all the marshals, and they're all raving about that move that we did, obviously in 1990, around the outside of Gerhard. So it obviously touched a lot of fans' hearts. Well, if you haven't seen it at home, look at it on YouTube because it was an amazing <laughs> move, wasn't it? Yeah, I was, I was a bit, um, I was a bit miffed with him. So I thought, there's no way he's going to beat me to second place. But uh, it was awesome. And uh, in those days, obviously, no power okay. steering, a bump in the corner, middle of the corner, 180 miles now in the middle, 192 miles now on the exit, got your attention. It got your attention, Nigel. It's wonderful to have you with us. Thank you for your time.